Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be looking at one of the questions from the Edexcel textbook. This is the Statistics and Mechanics Year 1 textbook. We're looking at exercise 10F in the book and question 3. This is a 17 mark question on pulleys. So here is the question. If you want to have a go at the question on your own, pause the video now and, um, and play the video once you're, once you're done. Um, in the description below, I have time stamped the different parts of the question. So if you want to skip ahead to part B, C, D or E, feel free to do so. Question three. Two particles A and B have masses M and three respectively, where M is bigger than three. So there is a diagram drawn here. I always like to draw my own diagram, so I'm just going to redraw the diagram by myself. So we've got A and B. Now A has a mass of M, so has a weight going down of Mg. B has a mass of 3, so 3G going down. Now M is bigger than Three. Now this tells me that since this particle is heavier than that particle, this is the particle that's going to be going down. So it's going to accelerate in this direction. So this whole system is going to accelerate that way around. So this will go down and this part will go up. And because it's one system, the tension here will be equal to the tension here. They're connected by a light and extensible string. Yeah, so that's why the tensions are the same. Uh, initially, A is 2.5 meters above the ground, just like, just like that. The particles are released from rest with a string taut, and the hanging parts of the string vertical as shown in the figure. After A has been descending for 1.25 seconds, it strikes the ground. Okay, so this basically ends up here, and that takes 1.25 seconds. Okay, particle A reaches the ground before particle B hits the pulley. So particle B has not got that far yet. Show that the acceleration of B as it ascends is 3.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so this looks like a SUVAT question. So let's prepare a SUVAT. So S U V A T. What do we know? Well, we know it falls 2.5 meters. We know it starts from rest. We don't know anything about the final speed. Uh, the acceleration, we need to show that it's 3.2, so I'm going to put a question mark there. And the time it takes is 1.25 seconds. So I can use the SUVAT equation S equals UT plus a half AT squared here. So S is 2.5 equals UT, which is 0 times 1.25, plus a half A times 1.25 squared. So that's 2.5 equals naught plus half A times 1.25 squared. All right, so let's work out what 1.25 squared times a half is. Okay, so that is 25 over 32. So to find A, I'm going to do 2.5 divided by 25 over 32. So 2.5, and then I'm going to just divide that by the answer, which is 16 over 5, which is 3.2. Perfect. So show that the acceleration is 3.2. So that's part A done. Part B. 
find the tension in string A as it descends. So find the tension in the string as A descends. So as A is going down, what is the tension in the string? Now, it's asking you to work out this tension. But we know that this tension is exactly the same as this tension because we're talking about the same piece of inextensible string. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to F equals MA for particle B. And the reason I'm picking up particle B is because I know its mass is 3 as opposed to A, where I know the mass is M. So there's one less unknown here. So I'm going to do F equals MA for particle B. So this particle is moving upwards. So we have T. And then opposing it, we have the weight, which is 3G. So T minus 3G is equal to mass times acceleration. So the mass is 3. And then the acceleration we just worked out was 3.2. So T take away 3G is equal to 9.6. So T is equal to 9.6 plus 3G. And that gives us 39. So the tension in the string is 39 newtons. So the tension in that tension there is 39, so that tension there is 39. So that's the answer to part B. Part C. Show that M is equal to 65 over 11. M. Okay, so I think we're going to have to use F equals MA again, but for particle A this time. So let's try that. F equals MA for particle A. So particle A is moving downwards. So the downward force we have is MG. We are opposing it with a T, so minus T equals mass times acceleration. We, okay, so let's just put MA for now. All right, now we know some of these values, don't we? So we know, well, MG we don't know. Tension we just worked out was 39. Um, and the acceleration is 3.2. So this is now 3.2 M. So I'm going to take the 39 over there and the M over here. So this becomes MG minus 3.2 M equals 39. I factorize M bracket G minus 3.2 is equal to 39. Uh, 9.8 take away 3.2 gives you um, 6.8, 6. 6.6. So 6.6 M equals 39. Let me continue over here. So 6.6M is equal to 39. So M is equal to 39 over 6.6, .6, which is the same as 390 over 66. Um, both numbers divide by 3, so that will give me 130 over 22. And both numbers are even, so we can divide by 2. So we get 65 over 11. So m is equal to 65 over 11, which is what it asked us to do. So we know that is correct. OK, part D. State how you've used the information that the string is inextensible. OK, so the way that we've used that the, the fact that the string is inextensible is that the tension, um, so the tension here, is equal to the tension here. So for D, how have we used it? Um, the tension is constant throughout. Throughout the string. Part E. Um, when A strikes the ground, it does not rebound, 
and the string becomes slack. Okay, so let's try and visualize what's going on here. So A hits the ground and B has ended up around here somewhere. Okay, so this does not bounce off the ground. The string becomes slack. Particle B then moves freely under gravity. So B is going to move upwards. Yeah, so it's traveling at a certain speed. It's this one suddenly come to a stop, so um, it's going to move freely under gravity, and it's not going to when without reaching the pulley until the string becomes taut again. So it's going to go up a little bit, maybe to about here, and then it's going to come back down to the same point, and that's where the string becomes taut again. So. What we need to do first is we need to figure out the at the point at which A hits the ground, what is the speed of A? Because that's going to be the same as the speed of B. So we're going to do this using SUVAT. It's just traveled 2.5 meters downwards. The initial speed was zero. And the final speed is what we are trying to work out. The acceleration was 3.2 and the time was 1.25. So we've actually got more information than we actually need here. Uh, let's just use uh, V equals U plus AT. So V is equal to 0 plus 3.2 times 1.25. Okay, so 3.2 times 1.25 is 4. So V is equal to 4. So at the instant when Particle A hits ground, its velocity is equal to 4. At that same point, particle B is over here, and its velocity must be the same because it's attached to the same piece of string. Okay, so that's the first part of this. Now, this one remains on the ground, and then this one moves freely. So it's going to move freely until its velocity becomes zero. So we're now going to do a SUVA equation uh, to figure out how long it takes to get from here to the point where it um, stops at instantaneous rest before coming back down again. So let's see what we know from this. So we don't know S because we don't know how much we travel. U is our initial speed. Now our initial speed is going to be 4 because we start at 4. Our final speed is going to be 0 because this is the moment where we're at instantaneous rest. Our acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 because the only acceleration we have is gravity pulling us downwards. And in this question, I'm trying to find the time. So time, let me write that. The time is question mark. So what SUVAT equation can I use here? It's going to be V equals U plus AT. So 0 equals 4 minus 9.8T. So 9.8T is equal to 4. So T is 4 divided by 9.8 which is 40 over 98, which is 20 over 49. Okay, so that's the time taken. So 20 over 49 seconds. That's the time taken from the point where A hits the ground. Okay, that's there for it to go to the top and then stop at instantaneous rest before falling back down. Okay, so that's that part. Now we need to calculate that part. Okay, now that part, you can do a similar calculation here. This time, U is going to be 0. Acceleration is going to be 9.8. We're going to work out T. And what you'll realize is that the time it takes to come down is going to be exactly the same as the time it took to go up. So the total time will just be 2T. And 2t is going to be 40 over 49 seconds. Okay, so this hits the ground, and it's going to take 40 over 49 seconds for this to go up and back down and make the string taut again. 
Okay, but if you do the calculation again, you'll come to the same conclusion there.